others. Of all of the beautiful and enduring themes for stories and literature, one of the ones that I like the best is the homecoming story. The one in which the protagonist leaves the comfort of home, encounters various dangers and trials, gets lost on dead-end paths, meets strangers, some of whom might be friends, lovers, monsters, or enemies. But at the end, the protagonist arrives home, safe and sound, and is reconciled to his or her loved ones. And the story ends with the hero or the heroine wiser, more compassionate, more humble, more aware, more astute. The season of Lent that we begin today is very much like that homeward journey. Lent calls each of us to come home, to come home to the basic facts of our existence. The fact that we are not immortal, the fact that we are unconditionally loved by God and reconciled to him through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the fact that we are all called to exercise love and mercy toward one another in imitation of the God who has loved us. Sometimes you and I can lose sight or consciousness of these three facts. And this happens to us because we tend to live at some distance from our real lives. Most of the time, we think we are immortal. We think that we have bestowed existence upon ourselves and that we are the owners and the masters of everything and everyone around us. We think that it is okay to love things and use people rather than to love people and use things. We need to come home to the fact that in truth we have no control over the length of our lives, even if we do have control over the depth of our lives. We tend to live at some distance from the truth that God loves us, that he loves us unconditionally. We live at some distance from the truth that there is nothing that we can do or say or become that would make God love us less. We tend to believe that somehow we have disqualified ourselves from God's love because of our sin, and thus give ourselves an excuse to remain separated from God, alienated from God. Who needs a God in their life who does nothing but judge and condemn? So we need to come home to the fact that sin is real and that sin is powerful in our lives, but that sin, no matter how serious, no matter how destructive, is no match for God for us and that we cannot out-sin. We cannot out-sin God's mercy. And we tend to live at some distance from the obligation we have to love one another with the fullness with which God loves us. There are people in our daily experience who suffer and cry out for us. The poor, the rejected, the homeless, of course, even though we treat them as though they were invisible. But even those who might live on our floor or in our apartment, members of our fraternity,
or sorority or service sorority whose lives are coming apart at the seams, who are consciously or not becoming more and more addicted to behaviors or substances which are destroying them while we pretend not to know them, or give ourselves the coward's excuse that it is inappropriate to judge another. We need to come home. Come home to the fact that especially when it comes to maintaining or destroying life, we are always our brother's keeper, no matter what. We find ourselves living at a distance from these facts of our existence, usually not because we have made a deliberate choice to forget who we really are or where we really belong. We aren't so much bad as we are so compulsively busy, so easily distracted by what's new or what's popular, and so easily susceptible to the sense of emergence and necessity with which the media and advertising inundate us without ceasing. So here we are today, and maybe for the first time in a while, we are conscious of both our need and our desire to come home, to claim once more the facts of our existence. During this season, the church recommends three sure and clear paths, which will help us to get beyond the masks and the illusions and the lies about our lives and bring us home. First, we side ourselves with ashes today as the sign that we are not immortal. That someday we will have to give an account of the choices that we have made. Second, the church recommends that we pray a little bit more during Lent to remind ourselves of what God has done for us and is doing for us. We might try the Jesus Prayer, which takes five seconds to say, but which reminds us of who we are and who God is. The prayer is simply, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. We are always sinners. And God always, always has mercy. And third, the church recommends that we perform some concrete acts of compassion and mercy for our neighbors. Perhaps we could choose to pray for those on our campus whose lives are going out of control. Perhaps we could make a list of people that we find difficult and then pray for one of them every day. Perhaps we could strike up a conversation with someone we don't know very well or who's different from us. Perhaps we could express gratitude to the worker in the lair or the member of the maintenance staff or the gardener instead of treating them as if they didn't exist or as if we owned them and they were our friends. This season of Lent, this great season of grace, calls each of us home, home to the beauty and the mystery of who we are. It calls us to reclaim with new eyes and with new wisdom the purpose and the meaning of why we are here at all. You know the old saying, home is where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. And let 
leads us right to our hearts. Come home.